Because I don't have enough controversy in my life, I thought I'd talk about which is better, traditional publishing or self-publishing. On the other side of the intro. Hi, I'm John Gilstrap, author of the Jonathan Grave Thriller Series, and beginning in February of 2021, the Victoria Emerson Thriller Series. And when, you know, one of the questions that comes up all the time uh, at writers' conferences and on writing boards and all of that is, which is better, traditional publishing or self-publishing? Well, by way of full disclosure, I have only been traditionally published, but I do believe that there are avenues and there are times when self-publishing is, in fact, the, the better alternative. So we're going to talk about that over the next few minutes. Uh, but first of all, a little bit of the backgrounds of both. So what are the differences between traditional publishing and self-publishing? What does that actually mean? Well, with traditional publishing, the, the publisher buys the publishing rights from the author and then takes care of everything. Uh, money only flows toward the author. It's, it, the author never pays anything for it. Now, once the publisher has the manuscript, they take care of the editing and the production design, uh, cover design, distribution, you know, getting the books into bookstores, uh, and then all the marketing and publicity, or a lot of the marketing and publicity. You know, these days, authors are responsible for taking care of a lot of their own uh, certainly a public appearances and you got to have an online presence and, and, and that sort of thing. But all of that is taken care of or arranged, most of that is taken care of or arranged by the publisher. I think one of the, the key ingredients for me is this whole money flow issue. Um, I'm going to post at the end of this video, there, there will be a link to a video I did on how authors get paid. And it goes into how advances work and uh, how royalties work and, and, and those, those details. But the fact is that really as, as a traditionally published author, all I have to do is write the books and do some promotional stuff on their behalf. Self-publishing, on the other hand, is the exact opposite of that, where the, uh, the, the author writes the book, pays for an editor to bring the book into shape, pays to have the, the uh, book designed, which means what it looks like when you turn the pages and what have you, if it's just an ebook only, there are still some design issues that are involved. Cover design, he's got he's to pay, the author has to pay for somebody to design the cover. There's just a lot of, of upfront costs that are involved with self-publishing. Now with that comes uh, a, a greater deal of control. I'm not sure that's a good thing, but we'll discuss that in, in, uh, in greater detail. Now, the, the royalty paid per book sold for self-publishing is much higher than the royalty paid for a traditionally published book, but again, that's not necessarily a good thing too. We'll talk about the upsides and downsides of each of them right about now. All right, what are the upsides of traditional publishing? We've already talked about the money flow, and we've already talked about the direct access to the professionals who take care of things like cover design and production design, what the actual book looks like. All of those things that are, that are frankly well outside of my skill set. I just don't know how to do those things. But there's, there's more to the traditional publishing model as well. And that is that you've, you've, you're part of a team. There are people there to help you. you the, the editor is at your beck and call. Um, I've done a video uh, on, as part of this channel that you know editors don't actually change anything. They can't change a word of what you've written unless you give them permission. But you know when you when you have professional editors at a commercial publishing house that have seen what works and what doesn't, you know it's just it's there's a, a sense of comfort in knowing that you know you're not you're not making up every step along the way on your own. It also Traditional publishers have established sales and distribution outlets. They have salespeople who will reach out to bookstores and reach out to the chains, um, reach out to the book clubs and and you know Amazon and and all. They they have these established networks that I don't have, and I don't think that most indie publishers um, or in, indie, independent authors have them either. 
Also, when you come from a, uh, a traditional publishing house, you have much greater, easier access to foreign sales, uh, where the publisher has contacts, or your agent has contacts with foreign publishers to, um, to sell you know, overseas contracts. Each, each translation of a book is, is another revenue source for the author. It's another contract. And the same is true for movie deals. Um, when, when an established publishing house puts out a book, there's a certain, you know, there's been a gatekeeper. There, there's a certain anticipation of quality material and quality storytelling, and that makes things, access to movie deals and TV deals a, a little bit easier. All right, the downside, there are downsides to um, traditional publishing. And I'm not, in, I'm not entirely sure they are downsides, actually, but, um, but they are perceived as such. And one is that it's much more competitive. You know, it's anybody, anybody with a word processor and, and a click, you know, ability to click publish can self-publish a book, particularly these days of, of e-books. You, you go on one of the e-book platforms, you put it out there, and, and, and it's there. Um, there are gatekeepers in the traditional publishing market, and, and it's hard to get in. Most require an agent uh, in order to even get access to the editorial staff uh, to evaluate the book to decide to buy it, right? So, um, and it's, it's much slower publishing time. You know, it'll take a year, 18 months for the book you sell today to actually hit the stands. And the uh, royalties are typically lower than they are for self-published. I mean, some self-published books, I think the royalties are up around 70%, 70%, 70 and they're much lower, much, much lower. Some single digits, depends on the format of the book, it could be, you know, 8%, 12%, 15% of the cover price of the book through the traditional publishing market. Uh, But remember, you know, that's counterbalanced by the access to the distribution networks. Uh, So, you know, 15% of 100,000 sales is significantly more than 70% of 100 sales. So, you know, it's, 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 you know it's, it's a mixed bag. So often what is perceived, and the fact that you have to have an agent. So often what's perceived to be a weakness in the traditional publishing market, I actually think is a strength because it provides that gatekeeper and a certain perception of quality assurance. Let's talk about self-publishing. Yes, there are upsides. There are no barriers to entry. You know, you can write what you want, when you want, how you want, and publish it on your own timeline. You can have, you have absolute control over every element of it. Uh, you, you, can, you can have whatever words, you can have whatever sentence structure you, can, you want, you can, do, you know, whatever. You can cross genres. You can do, you have absolute freedom in the self-publishing model uh, because, uh, because you're the boss. You know, you're every step along the way. You're the cover designer, you're the production designer, you're the editor, you're, and of course you can hire these things out, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all on you. So, you know, that, that, that kind of spontaneity, I think, is very attractive to some authors, and for some authors, I think it's, it's, it's the best way to go. Now we'll talk about the downsides of self-publishing as I perceive them. It can be somewhere between expensive and very expensive. Uh, Depends on what kind of editor you hire and all those steps along the way that we've already talked about in terms of finding distribution networks, in terms of putting together swag, you know, the stuff that you give away to to market your books and all of that. Um, That's all on you. So um, a lot depends on how much you, you trust your ability to know what good cover art is and what good cover art isn't. I don't have that ability. I'll be perfectly honest with you. That's just, that's just not my wheelhouse. I don't understand that stuff. And frankly, it kind of terrifies me. But you know, if, if that is your thing, then, then that's terrific. You don't have, as a self-published author, you don't have equal access or as ready access to the foreign markets or to the um, uh, movie TV sales. That's, that's a very, very difficult thing to, uh, to break into. Um, and also, you know, frankly, self-publishing is often a one-way course. A lot of people want to self-publish their first book to get it out there for whatever reason. You know, they're, they're, they're just anxious to get it out or it's the story that's been in their head forever. 
But once you get the, whatever the, the ebook version of an ISBN is, the, the, the identification for a book, you're in the system. You have a permanent record. And if your first self-published book does not sell well, that doesn't mean it goes away. So your, your chances of getting a traditional contract on the heels of having a poorly performing uh, self-published book is, uh, is, is difficult. You know, it, it's just, it's much less likely to happen simply because you have a track record of, of not doing very well. You know, there are some really, really good self-published books that are, that are out there. Um, the Martian uh, started as a, as a, a self-published book, and then it was picked up by one of the majors. But the problem, I, as I see with self-publishing, the biggest problem, in addition to the money flow, the biggest problem is the lack of respect that is shown toward self-published books from the established publishing market. Now, there is one, one form of publishing. I need to mention it only to say don't ever do it, and that is vanity publishing. This is where you pay a publisher to... Um, a publisher, you pay them to edit and design and, and publish your, your book. That is not self-publishing. Right? If, if, if there's a difference. In, in one case, with self-publishing, you're paying your own bills. Right? You're paying a cover designer, you're paying uh, an editor, all these, all these different people. With a uh, vanity press, they pretend to be real publishers and they say that they will put out X number of copies of your book and that they will edit you and all you have to do is pay, pay, pay along the way. Um, avoid those, run away. Uh, they, they're just not reputable folks. There are times when self-publishing is, I think, the preferred route. I think it's the best way for an author to go. One that comes to mind is if you are a uh, subject matter expert or if you're a public speaker, you do motivational speaking, and you put your thoughts in your book, uh, relatively small uh, potential audience, you know, if it's, I don't know, you're, you're talking about rocks and minerals or quilting or, you know, something that has a, a very strong following and gets enthusiastic audiences, but just doesn't have the kind of penetrative audience that more commercial uh, the books would have, then I think self-publishing is, is the way to go. You get your book done, you get it printed, you have it in the back of the room, and everybody who's all fired up by what you've talked about go out of their way to go and buy your book. I mean, it's silly, I think, in a circumstance like that. I think it's almost silly to try to get a traditional publisher because it's, it's such a, a, a guaranteed kind of market. Another group that I think is, is very well suited to self-publishing are authors with an established audience uh, who for some reason have been dropped by their publisher. Maybe the publisher has changed, there's all kinds of reasons that can happen. Uh, the publisher changes its focus, you know, they no longer have a mystery line or a romance line or whatever, and, and they cut the author loose. But the author has a fan base of, of a lot of readers, thousands of readers. Uh, I think it's a very good idea to keep your books in print uh, by self-publishing them and leveraging the, 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 the people that um, who are your fans. I did a video on this channel that talks about networking and um, uh, promoting your books. I, I recommend that you, you give that a look. I'll put it in the comments or in the uh, description down below. Also, I think people are writing their family histories. You hear a lot of people who are doing um, uh, uh, journals or memoirs and the memoirs, you know, most people don't leave that, lead that interesting a life. So not many people can write a memoir that has a potential for wide distribution. But it's certainly your family. You know, if, if, if I, I wish most of my, you know, all my parents are dead and, and uh, obviously theirs are gone. It would be wonderful to have a written history. There's an oral history that's passed down that gets better and better with each generation. But it'd be lovely to have a written history of, of the family. And that's another... Uh, another place where I think self-publishing is, is the way to go. And I think there are individuals, there are writers for whom the traditional publishing market is hands down the best way to go. And what comes to mind right now is, is new novelists, new fiction writers. Uh, you know, it's, 
because there are no gatekeepers in the in the self-publishing market, the, that market is just flooded with, quite honestly, I mean no offense, there's really good stuff there, but there's a lot of dreck there as well. And for a new writer, it's just very, very hard to float to the top. A new good writer, it's very hard for them to float to the top among all of the bad writing that's out there. So I think uh, if, if, if you have faith in your story and you have your fa faith in your abilities as a writer and you want to make a career out of this thing, uh, really fight hard for, for the traditional published, traditionally published uh, book. You have that team behind you. Uh, you have, it's the marketing team and the editorial team and the design team, uh, representation, you know, you're going to have an agent behind you for this. Uh, you have the potential for foreign sales, you have potential for movie sales. All of that, especially for a new writer who, who's just now beginning to navigate the, the churning waters of the publishing industry, I think that the traditional, publish, traditional publishing market is, is really their best option. Novelists who want to make it big. I think need to be backed by a traditional publisher just because for all the other things that we've talked about, uh, you, you need to have that team, you need to have experts, paid professionals, folks who have dedicated their lives to putting books out to the public. Not all of them hit, obviously, most of them fail, but at least they fail with, <laughs> with a lot of effort behind them. Uh, I guess that's kind of <laughs> a Pyrrhic victory, I'm not sure. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's helpful to have that, that team, and I, I, I can't imagine, uh, it's been a long time since I did my first book, I'm, I'm 23 books into my career now, and, I, and I'm terrified by the idea of, of doing it alone. So it, it has to be very difficult for, for newbies that are doing that. So the bottom line is this, you know, I'm admittedly old school. I got into this game uh, 23 books ago, the first one came out in 1996, so for me, when I was first starting, there were really two choices. I had the traditional publishing market and I had the vanity press. What we've talked about before, the vanity press is just a non-starter. It's just not, it's not a place you want to go. So going the traditional route for me was a no-brainer. It was very, very simple. Um, it's less simple than that now because of the availability of eBooks and of a number of, of you know, formatting programs and such that, that, that make things easier. There's, there's a whole lot of, of cover designers and freelance editors. All those people are out there. So it's, um, it, it all depends on, on what your goals are. You know, if, if you're trying to build a career and you're interested in selling um, a lot of books and you're interested in having, writing a lot of books, each of which sell, sells a lot of copies, uh, I don't see a way around the traditional publishing market. So, you know, basically if, if your goal is to sell hundreds of books or thousands of books, um, maybe traditional publish, or excuse me, maybe uh, self-publishing is the way to go. But if you're interested in selling thousands of books, 10,000s of books, hundreds of thousands of books, the traditional route is pretty much all that's, that's Nothing's guaranteed success, but you got a better shot. All right, so that's my view on all of this. I'm sure there'll be some controversy. Go ahead and put them down in the comments. But in the meantime, if you don't listen to me, you're going to do whatever you want because there are no rules. Uh, but I just thought I'd, I'd share my thoughts on this. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to ask you guys to please take care. Please keep reading. I'm John Gilstrap. <laughs>